Welcome friends to this epic road trip adventure of mine. I'm a long ways away from the sunny skies of Tampa Bay, Florida, but this road trip needed to be done. For years I've wanted to pay tribute and pay my respects to a rockabilly pioneer and quite possibly one of the most influential musicians of the 20th century. He wrote Blue Suede Shoes, which is easily one of the most famous and most recognized songs from one end of the earth to the other. I'm talking about Carl Lee Perkins. And in this road trip, I'll be visiting the town where he was born, and we'll see his boyhood home, and then I'll be traveling to Jackson, Tennessee, and that's where Carl called home. We'll see Carl's house that he lived in, and I'll also be stopping by the Legends of Tennessee Music Museum, which houses the largest collection of Carl Perkins' career. I'll also be visiting the final resting place of Carl's to pay my respects. This road trip was an attempt for me to feel closer to a man that I've never met. And during my travels, I really got a good feel for Carl Perkins, Tennessee. And after seeing the sights and getting to hear the locals talk about Carl, hearing their perspectives and personal insights, I honestly do believe that I feel closer to this man now I've always known and have heard stories that Carl was a very friendly man, but after hearing many of the people of Jackson, Tennessee talk about him and listening to others' first-hand experiences with him, I think that it's safe to say that Carl Perkins was one of the kindest and nicest people ever to be in show business. And so with that, friends, I'd like to ask you to join me on this journey as I travel through Carl Perkins, Tennessee. You know, I started playing guitar in 1986. I was just 12 years old. And ever since I was a little boy, I've always been a fan of Roots music. I loved rockabilly, I loved early rock and roll. In fact, the past 26 years of my music career, I've dedicated solely to playing rockabilly music. And I've been teaching rockabilly guitar online since 2007. And I'm extremely grateful for that opportunity to do so. But friends, I owe all of that to a man who was born in this very town, whose boyhood home was this very house in Tiptonville, Tennessee. And I'm talking about the king of rockabilly, Carl Perkins. So join me, friends, as I pay tribute to the great Carl Perkins. And let's start with checking out his boyhood home. Carl Perkins was born in April of 1932 during the Great Depression. And Carl's parents were poor sharecroppers. And at the very young age of just six years old, Carl started working in the cotton fields alongside his family. While Carl was growing up, he listened to the Grand Old Opry, he heard Southern Gospel music in church and in the fields, and one of Carl's early musical inspirations was a field worker named Jim. He sang blues and gospel on an old beat-up acoustic guitar. Jim was a huge inspiration to Carl, and it's something that he's stated all throughout his life. Oh, and here, there's no window, so we can stick the selfie stick in there. Get a view. Look at all these bees. Wow, Carl Perkins boyhood home. Really cool. Right next to his house, they've got this caboose, the Carl Perkins Express. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's see if we can see in one of the windows here. You can really get a sense uh, just behind me what kind of community this is, how rural it is, and how farming is, uh, is a big thing here. And, and it looks like it's a town that everybody knows everyone, you know? Everyone's quite neighborly. Now if we ask most people, where did the Beatles come from? They're probably gonna say Liverpool, but if we went to Liverpool and asked, where did the roots of rockabilly and rock and roll come from? If we ask them that there in Liverpool, they'll probably say Jackson, Tennessee. And that's where we're heading right now. Jackson, Tennessee, here we come. By the way, this road is named Carl Perkins Highway. How cool is that? And 
And now friends, I'd like to take you to Carl Perkins' house. He lived there from 1972 to 1998 when he passed away. Very nice neighborhood around here. A lot of uh, gated communities and just beautiful homes. All right, friends, here is the king of Rockabilly's kingdom, the home of Carl Perkins. See those guitars by the door? The home is still within the family. I think that his grandson lives here now. Nice house. Whew. Traffic around here in Jackson. It's crazy. Lots of people, lots of cars, lots of people going places. <laughs> I'm just trying to get to Casey Jones Village because there's something cool there. It's Carl Perkins' name on it that I want to show y'all. Uh, she says I'm three minutes away. Now friends, here I am at Casey Jones Village and there's something Carl Perkins related that I want to show you here. Walk over here where it is and show you. Now, Casey Jones Village is pretty cool itself, and you'd probably want to come here if you're in the Jackson area. Now, here in the village here is this placard, the Carl Lee Perkins, called the Rockabilly King and the Rock and Roll Architect. Singer-songwriter Carl Perkins was born in Lake County on April 9, 1932. In 1955, he wrote and recorded the celebrated rock and roll classic, Blue Suede Shoes. Perkins was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. And on the other side, it talks about how Carl Perkins was a strong advocate for the prevention of child abuse. He had worked alongside with the Jackson Exchange Club to open a center for the prevention of child abuse. And this has to be one of my favorite things about Carl. Not only is he a great musician, but he's a man of compassion and kindness. Now I'm a little hungry, so I'm gonna eat at the Old Country Store and Restaurant here in Casey Jones Village. I've heard a lot of good things about the food here, so I'm eager to try out some of their traditional southern dishes. Now inside the building, it's a 19th century general store setting, and there's also an old school ice cream parlor inside. And I gotta tell you, I just love going to places like this. The whole vibe in here is awesome. And the food smells delicious. It's food. Very tasty. <laughs> Thumbs up. All right. So this is Casey Jones Village, but it's time to move on to our next location. And man, I gotta put on my sunglasses. This sun, it's killer right now. <laughs> Okay, just pull into the cemetery where Carl has laid the rest. There's some groundskeepers out here cutting the grass. I hope uh, their noise isn't gonna get in the way. We'll find out. Okay, I believe Carl is somewhere in one of these. I'm gonna park the car and we'll get out there and check it out. Where can I park? <laughs> All right, friends, here is Carl Perkins. Not sure if you can hear me, Carl, but I'm a big fan of yours. It's an honor to be here. And my daughter, she's 14, she plays guitar. And uh, we were just listening to your Blue Suede Shoes. And she told me that she enjoys your version better than Elvis's. And I thought that was really cool that she enjoyed your version better. The original version, the man who wrote it. <laughs> uh, 
and I just wanted to say that your chuckle or that laugh that you do at the end of Paul McCartney's Get It, that duet you do with him, it is the best sound of laughter I've ever heard and that laugh has always stayed with me forever and whenever I hear it, it just warms my heart. Well Carl, you've got a nice spot here. This is a great view of the cemetery, the trees, the surrounding landscape, very pretty. I think I'm just gonna take a seat right here for a few minutes and just, uh, just relax. I drove a long way to, to come here and pay my respects to Carl. Mr. Perkins' music means a lot to many of us, many musicians. I'm just taking this all in. Well, thank you, Carl, for the amazing music. And uh, let's uh, go to our next destination. It's a beautiful day out here in Jackson, Tennessee. Wow, that was a really cool experience, eh? Um, I turned the camera off and, and I walked back over there and spent a few minutes over there. Uh, that was just a good, you know, personal moment I had. It was just, I'm really glad I came here. It's weird, when you come to places like this, you, I don't know Carl, and, but it gets personal, or, and then you feel closer, you know. I understand that we're not but it's just, you know. Anyway, let's go on to our next destination. Celebrating Carl Perkins' life, that's, that's, that's what we're doing today. That's what today is all about. I'm having a great time, and you know, there's just so much that I want to do here in Jackson. I, I actually, there's a guitar store that I would uh, love to visit. I'm just running out of time. I have to be back in Tampa Bay by Monday afternoon, and today is Saturday. Um, I'm going to be volunteering at my daughter's school Monday. Got a long drive back home. Very long drive. <laughs> but uh, totally worth it. Totally worth coming out here and doing this. This was so much fun. Uh, having a blast. And here we are at the Carnegie Center for the Arts and History. And inside this museum is the Legends of Tennessee Music Exhibit. And it opened in 1903 as the Jackson Free Library. And in 1975, this building was put on the National Register of Historic Places. So let's check out the museum and see what's inside and head straight into the Carl Perkins Exhibit. They've got an entire section of the museum dedicated to just Carl. Now there's a bunch of guitars in this exhibit and some are just stand-ins or replicas of something similar to what Carl used to play. But what I'm about to show you is a confirmed guitar of Carl Perkins and it just so happens to be his very first electric guitar that he ever owned. And the guitar is a Harmony Stratotone H44. And this here has to be the coolest thing in this museum. It's the crown jewel of the Carl Perkins exhibit in my eyes. This is really a cool piece of music history right here. It's known that Carl purchased his gold top Les Paul in 1953. So I'm gonna guess that he bought this Harmony in 1952, which was the same year that the Stratotone H44 debuted. Now, not that long ago on Reverb, I saw that the Perkins family had someone selling Carl's 1953 gold top Les Paul. And I believe the price was $250,000, but I'm not sure if it ever sold or if the family still has it. And I believe that Les Paul was used on the Blue Suede Shoes and Honey Don't recordings. Now in 1956, Carl had purchased a Gibson ES5 Switchmaster, and that guitar is currently being displayed in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. 
Now in Carl's later years, he can be seen using a GNL Broadcaster, and that became his ultimate favorite guitar. Now I wonder whatever happened to Carl's Echosonic amp. Was that sold? Is it still in the family? If anybody knows, let me know in the comments. And from the 1985 Carl Perkins and Friends Blue Suede Shoes, a rockabilly session televised concert filmed in London, here is Carl Perkins' outfit that he wore during that performance. And I know many of us have that on DVD, and I'm sure you've watched it many times over the years, just like myself. And friends, at a very quick glance, I thought this was the PVT-25 that Carl used in that concert. But it is not. It is a PVT-60. And I've read that Carl has owned a T-60, but I'm not sure if this T-60 was one of his that he owned in this display. Now here is a group picture that features a very young Carl. This picture was taken right out front of this museum back when it was a library. And I wonder if that very young Carl would have ever thought that one day this would be a museum and that there would be an exhibit of his musical career inside those walls. Now up high, lining up every inch of the ceiling around the museum are what looks to be silver tone guitars everywhere. And I'm not sure if there's any other brands of guitars up there, but this is so cool. I'm in guitar heaven. <laughs> They've done a great job with everything in here. And if you're a fan of Carl's, this is definitely something you want to check out for sure. I mean, it's, they've done a really good, good job. All right, well, that's gonna wrap things up for the museum. Now, my question for you, friends, which is your favorite Carl Perkins song? For me, Man, it's a tough one. Maybe All Mama's Children or Glad All Over. Uh, it's tough. I don't want to pick. I love them all. But let me know in the comments what you love. Back in the days when Carl was still alive, he had a restaurant here in Jackson called Swades. How cool would that have been to be able to go and eat at Carl Perkins restaurant. Now friends, I'm standing at the side of the building of the now permanently closed International Rockabilly Hall of Fame. But as you can see, this beautiful mural still exists. It's Carl Perkins and his two brothers, Clayton and Jay, and their friend W.S. Holland on drums. And even though all four men have passed away, they are immortalized on this beautiful mural. Now, if you couldn't tell already, it's obvious that the city of Jackson embraces the legacy of Carl Perkins. And make no mistake, friends, Carl Perkins is the forever rockabilly king. He started with simple beginnings in a rural country town. He learned how to play the guitar and wrote songs, good songs. In fact, they were songs that reshaped the world. And when he stepped on stage, he was spectacular. Well friends, I hope you enjoyed this video of Carl Perkins today. It was so much fun for me to do this close and intimate video. And just being here in Jackson makes me feel much closer to him. And as a fan, it's very comforting. And now before I go, I'm gonna leave you with a quote from Paul McCartney. If there was no Carl Perkins, there would be no Beatles. And with that friends, I'm gonna say goodbye and much love to y'all. Stay safe and I'll see you soon in another video. Take care everybody, bye-bye.